All right, hi Year 12s, this is Mr. Lim again. We're watching, we're making a video number 13 on corrosion. Say hi to all the titration peoples in the background who are doing their titrations on a Friday afternoon. All right. <laughs> Don't say hi, Tiana. What are you doing? So, um, we're doing uh, corrosion today. So we're going to be learning about wet corrosion. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, corrosion is the process of oxidation of a metal substance which reduces its structural strength. This is the main point, structural strength, but also its visual appeal because it looks all rusty and terrible. Um, the most common corrosion that occurs is the wet corrosion of iron, so it's not the dry corrosion that needs to have water there, but iron is not the only metal that can corrode. All metals can corrode, um, just depending on where it sits on the standard reduction potential table in terms of whether it will uh, react with oxygen or not. Okay, so this is what happens. First of all, you have a piece of iron and it has some water on its surface, nice and easy. Um, then, oxygen in the air collides with the metal at the interface between the water, the iron, and the air. So where is that? That's this, oh, oh, that location there. The interface between the water, the air, and the iron. Okay, that little part there. Okay, when that occurs, um, it the oxygen takes electrons from the ion, uh, from the iron, and uh, reduces itself to ox hydroxide ions. Okay, so the oxygen with some water uh, turns into hydroxide ions, and this is a gain in electrons, so it's a reduction. Okay, so that's the half equation for this particular reaction. The oxygen takes electrons from the iron and then turns into hydroxide ions. And it needs to be in the presence of water. That's why there's the water there, there. and plus it needs the um, the hydroxide ions need something to float in for a little while as well. All right, so it needs some water so that it can form hydroxide. Without this water, it cannot occur. And the interface is called the cathodic area. Why? Because the reduction occurs here. Okay, so generally this area here is the cathodic area in blue. Okay, so... That's the cathodic area, that's also the cathodic area. Um, that's because that's where reduction occurs. Okay, so the electrons are taken away from the C of delocalized valence electrons on the iron. Okay, so the iron has a C of delocalized valence electrons. Those electrons are taken at the interface, at the cathodic area. However, the oxidation can occur anywhere along the metal. So the oxidation generally occurs um, in the middle of the water source. So where's that? That's in that region there, in the middle. Okay, so you see there that the iron has, well, pitted, which means it's made a little pit, right? And the, uh, and the iron ions are now floating in the solution. Okay, um, generally, uh, it can only be under paint as well. It's generally wherever there is an oxygen, all right? Wherever this iron atom turns into iron ions, it forms a pit, and then it encourages further things. So. First of all, it makes a small little divot, then it gets deeper, then it gets deeper, right? And then it gets very, very bad, all right? So this pitting of the iron, or like kind of cutting in, causes the decrease in the structural strength. So eventually, at some point, it'll get so thin, it'll get so riddled with holes that it will break and it won't be able to um, hold up anymore, all right? Um, the equation for this uh, oxidation is Fe, the solid goes to Fe2 plus, plus two electrons, okay? So it's giving up its electrons, but not necessarily in the same place as where the oxygen took them from, okay? And so this is called the anodic region, okay? So the anodic region is here, uh, in the, generally in the center of the water, but it can also be under paint and under other stuff as well. All right, finally, the iron ions and the hydroxide ions precipitate to form uh, iron 2 hydroxide. So the iron 2 plus 2 OH minus makes Fe bracket OH bracket 2 solid. Okay, because they're uh, solids. All right, so these are two AQs. Okay, so that's a precipitation reaction, not a redox reaction. Then further I oxidation can occur where it turns into iron 3 hydroxide. So iron 2 hydroxide. can turn into iron 3 hydroxide. Right. Which are both solids with the addition of another OH minus ion. All right. And then to balance that out, you need another electron there. So it needs to give away another electron. Okay. 
So, then what happens is that the water evaporates because it gets hot at some point, and then the water goes away, right? And you end up with iron three hydro uh, iron three oxide, which is effectively rust. Okay, so you end up with this solid losing some water or having the water go away and forming iron three oxide, which is also known as rust. Okay, um, solid as well. And that's that brown colored stuff that you see on cars and stuff like that. That is so ugly. All right, so this entire process could be a 10 mark question in a test, so make sure that you uh, learn it well. You understand the anodic area, the cathodic area, the, all the equations and stuff like that. So make sure that you uh, pay attention and try all the questions that are there. All right, that's it.